off-grid stores here and in this video we're going to be talking about properly sizing your charge controller if you like the sound of this video please be sure to hit the like button it helps with the algorithm and we'll get it out to as many people as possible that are trying to start their off-grid solar systems and really just learn as simply as possible that's what we try to do here break down everything as simply as possible for you so in this video you kind of need to know what voltage you want what type of system you want do you want 12 volt 24 volt do you want 48 volt and then you're going to kind of have to pick you know your batteries or your charge controller you can do it in any way and hopefully it all makes sense at the end of this video so if you want to see more videos like this also please subscribe to the channel and let's get into it so what is a solar charge controller let's start with that so pretty much say you have a bunch of solar panels we always suggest having the same solar panels and it makes everything a lot easier. So let's say we have three of the same solar panels right here, 200 watt rich solar panels. And if we look at these rich solar panels on our website, you will see that right here, the voltage altogether is about, let's just say 20.4 is what we're working at, but you, you, you will always size it to the VOC. So let's do it 24.3. We have three of them. That's gonna be 72.9 volts. So we come back to the battery bank system here. You cannot charge 12 volt battery bank off of 72.9 volts. You're going to hurt your batteries. You're going to you're going to destroy it. You can't do a 24 volt system off of 72.9 volts. So the solar charge controller is basically in the middle between the solar panels and the batteries in order to drop down the voltage and charge your battery bank. It's super important. You don't want to mess this thing up. You don't want to really damage it in any way shape or form. It's very vital to your system. Main parts of any system are going to be the panels, the charge controller, the batteries, and your inverter. This is very important. So how do you size it properly? Or how do you go about how many panels should go into your solar charge controller? So say you already have a solar charge controller. Let's look at this one right here. This is the Rich Solar 40 amp solar charge controller. When it says 40 amps, that means that it is charging your battery bank at 40 amps. So you want to make sure that you aren't putting in too much power. So if you're putting in too much power, you're going to damage this charge controller and potentially your battery bank. So let's look at this. Let's say that we have these batteries right here from Rich Solar and they're 12 volts and we have them in series. So that basically it's a 24 volt battery. Let's just say they're in parallel. So it's a 12 volt battery bank. Now let's look at these equations right here. Very simple. Watts equals voltage times amperage. So if we have 600 watts going in, which we have three 200 watt panels right here going into your system and we can do it right here amps equals watts divided by voltage and we have a 12 volt battery bank let's just do it right here 600 watts going in into the system into your charge controller and coming out it's going to go it has to charge at 12 volts it always charges above 12 volts but let's say divided by 12 equals 50 amps that's going to be too much for your charge controller it's a 40 amp charge controller and one thing you can do here is if you look at it you can just go to the, the actual, you know, just manual for it. And it's going to tell you right here, max photovoltaic system input power. So the 40 amp charge controller right here only works with 12 volt and 24 volt systems. This 60 amp charge controller, although much more expensive, does work with 12, 24, 36, and 48. So if we look right here, it will say that 550 watts is the max photovoltaic system input power. So in reality, as long as you just look at the manual, you don't need this video but I'm going to try to show you the math as to why. So we take this out right here. We do 550 divided by 12. So that's how many Watts divided by the voltage, how many amps that's still 45.8. And you may be saying, Hey, that's higher than 40 amps. What gives? Well, 12 volt battery bank systems are never actually at 12 volts if, if you're doing everything correctly. So if you look over here where it says floating charging voltage, there's boost voltage. Let's say there's, you know, your battery systems low, the charge controller actually senses that you got a lot of sun going on right now. It will raise the voltage, but let's look at 13.8 volts. That's the floating charging. That's just what it's usually charging at. If we do 550 instead of divided by 12 volts divided by 13.8 volts. You're going to realize it's 39.8 amps, which is less than 40 amps. So therefore you're good. So pretty much it's going to tell you, and obviously if you double the voltage, you're going to be able to double the wattage because if we do 1,100 divided by 24, that's 45.8 again. Uh, I believe the floating voltage, we can figure it out, is going to be, oh, if we do 1,100 divided by 40, so it's going to be probably i'm going to assume the floating voltage here is going to be 27.5 is what this system uses i don't think it shows it 
for 24 volt systems. So pretty much if we look right here, you can't, if you're going to run a 12 volt battery bank system, you can't have 600 input and you know, it says 550. So are you going to get 510 watt panels? Probably not. There's not too many 110 watts out there. So you'd probably just be getting five 100 watt panels for 500 watts total and then putting it in here. So, I mean, that's pretty much the basic math of sizing your charge controller. Again, the main difference between a 40 amp and a 60 amp charge controller is the fact that on our website and everywhere else, the price is $159.99 for a 40 amp, and it's gonna be $349.99 for a 60 amp. So say you had 600 watts of panels and you wanted to keep this a 12 volt system, you would have to go for the 60 amp charge controller. And as you can see at 12 volts, we can get at up to 800 watts of solar into it. So you may be saying, hey, well, why don't I just go up to a 24 volt battery bank? Because all it means is that you're wiring these in series instead of in parallel to get it up to 24 volts. And that's perfectly fine. You can do that. One of the really only big issues afterwards is that you need to get a proper inverter for a 24 volt system. And you also need to make sure that the output, if, you're, if you have a, a DC fuse block up here for just DC powered 12 volt things, your 24 volts will be coming out. You need to use a DC to DC converter to drop it down there. The price of those are much cheaper. So it's going to be probably more cost advantageous to just use a 24 volt battery bank. And then at that point, if you have 24 volts and this many panels, you're good to go. It's only 25 amps. If we do 600 divided by 24, it's only 25 amps that are coming out and charging this battery bank. So hopefully this was simple short and easy and basically it's just whatever you're putting into it has to come out but all the charge controller is doing is changing around the way that it's coming out lowering the voltage raising the amps because if you look at the amps of this system these are all in series if we look it's at nine point say maximum 10.2 amps that that's that's all that can come out in series is the same amps across the board so pretty much what's going in is 10.2 amps what's coming out is anything 40 and below and then what's coming in is around 72 volts and what's coming out is the voltage of your battery bank whatever it is a little bit higher in order to charge them basically you want to be making sure that this is within your price range if not you know, maybe you need to go cheaper than just do a 24 volt battery bank. Another thing about it is you can use smaller wires on a 24 volt battery bank because there is going to be less amps going through these wires. So then you're saving money also on the copper of the wires because wires are expensive. They're not cheap. And that's pretty much that. You know, most people do like to go higher 24 volts. But again, if for some reason you didn't want to deal with a DC to DC converter down the line, if you do have 12 volt like lights, LED lights and other things like that, you know, even if you had a refrigerator that was running on 12 volts, there's a lot of things that run on 12 volts nowadays. Then if you didn't want to use the DC to DC converter, you'd probably just want to stay at 12 volts. Also, if maybe it's a, just a smaller power application in general, then you really have no need to go up to 24 volts. But as long as your charge controller can handle it, then I don't see why not. And that's about it. So hopefully this was as clear and as simple as possible. Yeah. Also, I forgot to mention, if you are a first time customer at Off Grid Stores, you do get a 10% off coupon, 10% now. And all of these items down below or used in this video or displayed in this video will be shown in the description down below. If you are interested in any of these charge controllers, we have these and more, then just check it out down below. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you.